you may be wondering how I came to be here tonight, to be standing here on this stage, you know, uh, at, the, at the focal point in Maplewood, Missouri. Um, and it's it's a it's a long uh, a long trip that got me started to come uh, to here. I'm glad I'm here. It was basically me starting to want to play guitar to accompany my family songs. That's really that was really my my whole goal was to to play you know to along with the ballads that my family used to sing. But along the way, my sister, <laughs> when I was about 14. She had a Paul Simon record, and on that Paul Simon record, there was a piece that Davy Graham had written. He was an English guitar player. And then that song, Angie, not Angie of the Rolling Stones, but Angie uh, uh, got picked up by a guy named Bert Yanch. And, it was, and Angie became sort of one of those songs that all guitarists wanted to take a crack at. Well, Paul Simon, he did a great job as well. And the thing that caught my ear and my heart and it was the first instance of something where I said I have to know how this works I have to know how to do what I'm hearing on this record and it's this this descending bass line and you're thinking about a thousand different songs but I had to know what that was so if you went in my house in Columbia between the ages of 14 and 16, you, if you walked in the front door, this is what you would hear. If I had my bedroom door, it would sound more like... But it was always there. God bless my mother. Who would stand at the foot of the steps and yell up loving and supportive things. Like, for the love of God! Play something different. So I, I you know, I try to. But it would always go back to. So Angie is kind of, it's, it's, it's a lifetime tune for me. I've played it my whole life. Well, I was one of those guys that I always had a day job. And I would work as hard as I could Thursday, you know, Monday through Thursday. I'd fly someplace. I'd, I'd go to a Prairie Home show and do that. Or I'd fly to a festival and I'd work as hard as I could for three days. And then I'd fly back to be right back, <laughs> right back on Monday morning doing work. Well, Prairie Home, I would go out with Garrison and I would do um, uh, the occasional solo show with him where he would, it was just him and singing with the crowd or telling some monologues, and I would sing with him. Well, after one of those shows, he uh, and I went out to dinner, and he said, um, oh, do you want to do this all the time, this music? Do you want to do this music all the time? <laughs> I said, you know, I think I do. And he said something so garrison-like and perfect. He said, you should do it now because you've got a great future behind you. <laughs> I couldn't stop thinking about it. So about a year later, I got an email out of the blue from Jerry Douglas and Allie Bain to go be a singer on the Transatlantic Sessions Tour of the UK. And I quit my job. And so the first gig of the Transatlantic Sessions Tour is always in the Glasgow Royal Performance Hall. And your Missouri boy did all right. I quitted my, I did okay. Yeah, I did okay. Well, I went, I went back to the hotel. I, I got some sleep. I was kind of buzzy from the show, but I got some sleep. And for whatever reason, the next morning I woke up and Angie was on my mind. And so I sat, I sat for a while and played Angie, maybe 15 minutes. Then I went downstairs and I got one of those big English breakfasts with like beans and tomatoes and many kinds of sausages. And I was sitting there on my third bad cup of coffee. And then a fella came up to me and he stood right in front of me. He had brown, gray, curly hair. And he said, hey, hell. And I looked at him and I said, 
are you Robert Plant of Led Zeppelin? And he said, yes, I am. <laughs> and I said, hi. <laughs> that was about as cool as I could get out. And he said, I enjoyed your program very much last night. I said, you were there? Yes. I said, you came all the way to Glasgow to see it? He said, no. <laughs> I said, well, then why were you here? He said, we're here two days hence to do a, a tribute to Davy Graham and Bert Yanch. And I said, that is so funny, because I was just playing Angie in my room before I came down here. And he, 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 he sort of turned into a folky. And he went, oh my God, I love that descending bass line. You know that day bass line? I had to know how to do that. I just had to know how to do that. I thought, well, all right. And then I thought, Maybe Robert Plant's mother stood at the foot of his stairs. <laughs> Probably more cultured than my mama from West Plains, Missouri, but, oh, Robert, for the love of God. And it got me thinking, you know, I, I, mean, I don't get the chance to play Angie all that often anymore, and I would like to play Angie for you. So, yeah. yeah. And this is for Logan, who likes guitars. For the love of God! The request line is open. Anybody want to hear something? Oh my gosh. Um, was that Dudding? Uh, Dudding, can I do it uh, in a slightly different way than you might be familiar with it? Um, I've, I've had the good fortune of having my songs cut and covered by uh, folks, and sometimes they're so good that I don't want to do a cover version of my own song. <laughs> And so um, this is a song that, that I wrote about um, what can happen even with the best of intentions. Sometimes you, you get into trouble on something even with the best of intentions. And this is, my grandfather was on one of the last cattle drives from Texas to Kansas in the early part of the 20th century. And uh, they ran into trouble. Not this, kind, this trouble specifically, but trouble. And... Uh, uh, Watch House, a uh, band used to be go by Mandolin Orange, but um, the Watch House band, they, they do a cover of this, and it's, uh, they do a great job. My favorite cover of it is by a brother and sister duo from, uh, who live on an island off the coast of Scotland. And the, the way the young lady says our state's name, she says, I never meant to stay so long in the Missouri borderland. It's like... <laughs> So that's like, oh. So I, I, I decided I would put this, um, I would, I would put this in sort of the ballad setting because this, of, of all the things I've written, this, this falls, sort of in that category. I'll, 
I'll uh, run it a little bit through my, the Ralph Stanley filter, as one does. But I'll, I, I, Kitty, that would be honored to sing Missouri Borderland for you. I'm far away from home With neither family nor friends I never meant to stay so long In the Missouri borderland Three years ago I held a job I saw the world from my pony's sway Riding Greg on a dusty mob I knew I'd worked when I drew my pay But times got hard, Christ, times got me And I fell in with desperate men And one night the worst of them Laid out what was an awful plan did not like such wicked talk of murder and bold robbery. I told those men that I would walk, but they all aimed their guns at me. Their prisoner, I did help rob a bank, and much gold we did attain. Shot a boy just for the sport I stood and watched his young life wane Such dreadful sounds I've never heard His mother's wailing filled the room She looked at me, she spat these words The devil take you to your doom Turn to face that murderous crew. I shot them dead, I killed all four, and the only thing I rue, I did not think of it before. The posse found me outside the town while I was kneeling there to pray. From a gallows high I will lay down Into a dark Missouri grave Please hide the rope stains around my neck When my mother sees me dead Please don't let my brothers take the fateful path I chose to tread For I am far away from home With neither family nor friends I never meant to stay so long In the Missouri borderland And now I'll spend eternity in the Missouri borderland. So, you never know what you're going to miss until you're until you're missing it. And I I missed playing music for folks. I guess we can all agree that it's been kind of a weird three, four years, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's been weird. Um, but I miss things about playing that I didn't realize I would miss, including standing at the record table and talking to people who come up to me because we don't know what you are going to say. <laughs> it's scary and a little thrilling all at the same time. And uh, I was doing a show, and a, a woman came up to me, and, she, and this is how she started her, her conversation with me. <sighs> Beg pardon? <sighs> Can you not write a fun song? 
I said, oh, I don't know. I've never tried. And uh, I guess, you know, I had been killing off a lot of relatives up in heaven and in Missouri borderlands and things like that. Mm -hmm. And so I, I thought, you know what, I, I probably should try and write <laughs> some fun songs. And here's one that I, I think that um, I, it's pretty, I have a fun time with it. It's, uh, I wrote it with my friend John Lowell. And he and I wrote it as if we were going to pitch it to Doc Watson, our late great. Uh, blind guitar picker from Deep Gap, North Carolina. Doc loved a song that had sort of a smile in 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 it. And um, this uh, <laughs> this is called "I Ain't Done Nothing Lately." I always raise a little cane, at least when I am able. If I don't change my rowdy ways, I wind up under the table. I'm frisky as a lamb in spring. I have not lived sedately. I've done a lot of foolish things, but I ain't done nothing lately. I went to town the other day, not looking for no trouble. I went out with a pair of twins. Now all my woes are double I'm frisky as a lamb in spring I have not lived sedately I've done a lot of foolish things But I ain't done nothing lately my chestnut mare or did I find a rope I'm frisky as a lamb in spring I have not lived sedately I've done a lot of foolish things I ain't done nothing lately I bought my gal a pawn shop ring and how she did berate me I've done a lot of foolish things And that's what I did lately I'll do a number for you that uh, Doc Watson said this about my wife. My wife used to be a, a presenter, a music presenter, uh, the Piedmont Council of Traditional Music. And um, Doc, being being uh, without sight, when he'd do the sound check, he'd just sort of hang until it was time to, to go up and do the show. And Susan's from Rome, Georgia. She has a beautiful southern accent. You gotta swear that you will not tell her that I imitated her. <laughs> Folks on the World Wide Web, turn your turn your, your damper down there. So um, she said, Doc, I need to go to the theater. Do you need anything before I go? And Doc was just knocked out by her accent. And he said, No, ma'am, no, thank you, thank you. Very cordial, very courtly. No, ma'am, thank you. Well, she went up to the theater and he leaned into my friend Bob Roop and he said is she beautiful and he said yeah doc inside and out she's a beautiful lady and doc said I knew it I knew it and then he said what became the title of this song he said well I'm too old to drive the train but I still love to hear the whistle blow I mean, how can you not write a song after, I, you know? I think it, and it's, I think it's supposed to, you're supposed to start it like that. I think that's in the rule book. Right? 
When I was a young man and I was in my prime, I worked on the Katy and the good old Mopac line. Started as a brakeman, but in life was fine. But I'm looking in the rear view, all I see is time. I'm too old to drive this train, but I still love to hear the whistle blow. Started making railroad green a long, long time ago. Whether it's a fast train or a freight, why didn't it slow? Too old to drive the train, I love to hear the whistle blow. I worked up to conductor, we would ride all night. Finally get a little sleep just before daylight. Once we sidetracked that old whistle, stop to get a little bite. A pretty gal who served the beans became my heart's delight. I'm too old to drive this train, but I still love to hear the whistle blow. Started making railroad green a long, long time ago. Whether it's a highball or a freight winding slow Too old to drive the train, but I love to hear the whistle blow Crescent serves New Orleans, Southern serves the South. I'm an engineer where words that felt good in my mouth. I started at the end of steam, but I learned the diesel's worth. A railroad and long enough to go ten times around the earth. I'm too old to drive this train, but I still love to hear the whistle blow. Started making railroad green a long, long time ago. And whether it's a highball or a freight winding slow, I'm too old to drive the train. I love to hear the whistle blow. Now I have a gold watch with my name inscribed within. It feels like I've just started, but I know I'm near the end. You might not want to hear it. Here it is, my friends. Your bones will rattle with a clickety clack on that you can depend. I'm too old to drive this train, but I still love to hear the whistle blow. Started making railroad green a long, long time ago. Whether it's a highball or a freight wind. So here's how we'll maybe do it. Well, uh, to quote my friend Jim Watson from the Ray Clay Ramblers, we will take a five minute break for 10 minutes. I will see you in 20. <laughs> I brought um, some little stocking stuffers. You know, any traveling musician will tell you that the holidays are just around the corner. I'll do a, a couple of banjo pieces and then we'll, we'll end the program. And then if, if you want to uh, ask for a... Um, uh, a request at the at the break. I see you looking at me while I tune, and I, you think I don't I don't mind. I kind of think of myself like a like an aircraft mechanic. I mean, you're sitting there in your window seat, and you see somebody out right there working on the engine. You don't mind waiting for them to do their job, do you? <laughs> you kind of want them to do their job. Same with a banjo. <laughs> I had another one of those moments that I had to know 
how something was being played, how, how it worked. And it, this was from a, a guy named Fred Cockerham. And uh, Fred uh, <clears throat> um, would play Old Reuben. Uh, Old Reuben is the tune that, um, that Earl Scruggs figured out how to be Earl Scruggs on. And, and Fred would, um, he'd, he'd finger pick it, and then he'd go into, whether you call it frailing, uh, with the back of your hands, frailing or claw hammer or wrapping the banjo or knocking the banjo. And so that, that transition between the finger picking and the, the claw hammer changed my life forever and, and for, for good. send you off to the break with something something pretty and it comes from the playing of D Hicks from the Cumberland Plateau in Tennessee had one of those black coffee and Winston 100 voices did you bring your music <laughs> yes sir well, get it out And then he'd play something using harmonics, that place between the nut of the banjo, the bridge right here. It's heavenly music to me. So um, um, wouldn't ask where you're from, wouldn't ask your political affiliation, wouldn't ask anything. He'd just say, did you bring your music? And then um, he'd say, are you ready? <laughs> And then he'd play this. This is Lost Gander. And Lost Gander is geese and ganders mate for life. And when they lose each other in the, the clouds, they'll call out to each other. And we'll see if we can get them back together.
See you in a bit. Let's welcome Joe back. Uh, give him a good focal point welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Your break was good. Pretty good. Uh, when I left day work, uh, in 2016, I told myself that I would do uh, everything just, you know, I would make everything like the Carter said, the, I would, the program would always be morally good, and I wouldn't do things that were illegal to bring money across the threshold, but I would entertain lots of different things to do. And um, my day job, I was a, a public affairs director for a state cabinet agency in North Carolina, and so I used to write speeches for department secretaries and the governor. and So I knew how to write speeches, and I started getting calls to come to do keynote addresses uh, at conferences. You know, sure, sure. And uh, there was one in South Carolina called From Okra to Opry. <laughs> and it was about Southern foodways and Southern music traditions. So I... Um, gave a fairly wide-ranging talk, but at one part of the talk, you know, I did the Missouri Borderland ballad style. I talked about ballads. And I, I, I said, uh, you know, a ballad is a, a narrative set to music, usually not a chorus, just verse after verse. It's sort of like watching a movie play out uh, in front of your very ears. And, and I, thought that, well, I thought it was a fairly good explanation. And at the end of my program, I said, are there any questions? And that hand goes up in the back. Excuse me, what's a ballad? <laughs> and I said, it's a, it's a narrative usually set to music. Uh, you know, if your name is Willie, you're going to kill someone. If your Mary, name is uh, Mary or Margaret, don't marry a, man, a boy named Willie. <laughs> but I, I gave the explanation again, and, and she, she said, well, can you do an example of a ballad? And I thought, I, you know, I, I got a little bit, I, 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 what I did is I took a, a song that I knew she'd know, and I, I put it in ballad form. I, I did the Ralph Stanley filter, let's push my teeth back a little bit. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that for you, because you can make lots of things a ballad, and this Actually, it's a song you know, and see if you know it. <clears throat> Sit back your hairy teeth of a fateful trip started from a tropic port aboard one tiny ship aboard one tiny ship the mate was a mighty sailor man the captain brave and sure the passengers set sail that day on a three hour tour a three hour tour the weather started getting rough Tiny ship was tossed, if not for the courage of the crew, the minnow would be lost. The minnow would be. The ship set down on the shore of a uncharted desert isle with Gilligan, the skipper too, the millionaire. And his wife, the moonly star, and the rest are here on 
Gilligan's Isle, are here on Gilligan's Isle. That's it. <laughs> well, Mr. Dunning asked for this. Um, I come from a poetry-loving family. My, my grandfather, Newberry, Sterling, Sterling Newberry, <clears throat> loved poetry, had one of those uh, almost griot-like memories. Uh, by the time he was nine or ten, had memorized most of the Iliad and the Odyssey. And, and uh, people would uh, come down on the train from Memphis and St. Louis to hear this little farm boy in, outside of Eureka Springs recite Homer. Well, I, um, my Aunt Mildred passed away, and her basement was getting cleaned out, and they found a folder that said Sterling Newberry, 1910. And in that folder were poems that Grandfather had written, including this one. It was a one stanza poem called Reminiscent. I have felt the sting of Spanish darts down in old Mexico. And I know the pain of bullets hot as through the flesh they go. I've ridden through the ice and snow out on the western plain and felt my blood turn chill and cold neath the icy rain. All these things will hurt you, yet they cannot compare with tempest in the human heart, which cometh unaware. And um, so I was working on this project, this recording project, Funny, I have some back there. Um, I was working on a recording project with my friend John Shane, and and our producer said, you know, we're. I, he said I'd like one more song, something that's just a little, little uh, uneasy, a little unsettled feeling, maybe a little spooky. And I said, well, my my grandfather did a, a, a one stanza poem, but there's no music to it. And John said, uh, well, tell me the words and uh, and and I'll see if I can come up with a melody. Well, I recited the words just like that. And Shane said, God, I've got something on my phone that'll be perfect. And he, I recited it, and he played it, and it, it was. It was perfect. And then I, I said, but there's only one stanza. And the producer looked at me like this. And he said, oh, if only there were a songwriter here. So I gave it a try, and I wrote a, I, I wrote a second stanza, and I really, I had a, a fun time trying to match my grandfather's use of language and sort of the, the tone that he had. And, and I thought it was pretty cool that I got to do a co-write with Sterling 104 years apart. It's called Reminiscent, and Keith, thank you for asking for it. I felt the sting of Spanish darts Down in old Mexico I know the pain of bullets hot As through the flesh they go I've ridden through the ice and snow Out on the western plain Felt my blood turn chill and cold Beneath the icy rain All these things will hurt you Yet they cannot compare With tempest in the human heart Which cometh unaware of bad men's knives down in old Arkansas and howls of the Indian tribes in many a lonely drove I've watched steam rise the lowland by the river's muddy shore watch death welcome foes and 
his eternal door All these things will scar you Yet none can leave a mark Like hearing I have been untrue As a whisper in the dark All these things will hurt you Yet they cannot compare With tempest in the human heart Which cometh unaware Writing a lot with my friend John Lowell, who lives uh, in Livingston, Montana, and and he's a history buff, and so we we write uh, we write cowboy stuff. And uh, uh, Compton, Mr. Compton, is not a huge fan of cowboy music. Uh, it's not that he has anything against it. He just doesn't. That's a genre that he doesn't like. So so I've been doing it out more just on on my own, and uh, but. But there's a little part of it, him in it because at, right after I met Mike, uh, this back in 2009, I don't know why, but I, I, I've always called him Pard. Just come on, hey Pard, how you doing? Well, this song is called Old Pard. It's about two, two old ranchers, two old cowboys, just sort of making their way together. Cowboy bends low, tending his fire. He keeps it small so the flames don't mount high. His old part stands vigil with a keen watchful eye. East, west, north, south, the land and the sky. Herd beds on down, they visit a while. Old Pard says change is coming with a sad, wistful smile. Then off in the distance, a steamboat's low moan rings out through Fort Benton, loading cargo for home. The days of the trapper are over and gone and Millions of bison have been turned into bones The black feet are cooped up on small plots of ground And towns full of greenhorns spring up all around says, hold on, another whistle I hear. It's the iron horse bringing more changes, I fear. Soon you won't swing a cap without hitting someone. And strands of barbed wire mean the old ways are done. Hard says Australia 
is still wild and free a place to stretch out it's a good place to be though changes will follow wherever they go they'll both be planted so they'll never know oh the days of the trappers are over and gone, and millions of bison have turned into bone. The black feet are cooped up on small plots of ground, and towns full of greenhorns spring up all around. Towns full of greenhorns spring up all around. Yeah. Before I put the guitar up, request time on the program. As we rise. Let me do one banjo number and then I'll do it. How about okay. that? All right. I did this number the last time I was here. Uh, it's a it's a an honest to goodness banjo piece. It's not a it's not a fiddle tune that morphed over into the banjo. It, this started life as a banjo piece, and it's um, last chance. When you put a banjo in a tuning like this, it does all the work. You could throw a shoe at it. You could throw a brick on it. It would sound pretty good. Um, this comes from Hobart Smith, uh, a banjo player and piano player from Southwest Virginia. I joke with folks, but it's really true. It's, it's, the tuning is F, C, F, C, D. Say it with me. F C F C. If you have trouble remembering it, just think of your friend Newberry's elementary school report card from Malden, Missouri. F C F C D. Somebody called out for singing as we rise. I shall do it for you. This, uh, 
I wrote this song at the world's most aptly named music camp in, in the United Kingdom. It's called Sore Fingers. <laughs> true, a true, truer camp name you've never heard. You teach six hours a day, three, in, three hours in the morning, three hours in the afternoon. You have workshops, you have jam sessions, you have concerts that you give. And so by the end of the week, you're sort of raving, but you're also playing with a fluidity because you've just been playing so much. And they're the same with, with writing. I was, I was walking to breakfast with a friend of mine, and uh, he said, did you hear those larks this morning? They were singing as they rose. And I went like... <laughs> and so I, I wrote a song about my... My dad and my mother, my dad and my sister all up in heaven doing the things that they love to do. My mother loved to sing. My dad was a hardworking man. And my late sister, Amy, was a pastor. And so when I sing the verse about sisters preaching as she rises, it's the absolute truth. Now, the Gibson brothers recorded this song, and I was thrilled that, that they did. And um, But and actually, just as much of a thrill to me was getting an email out of the blue from the pastor of what had been my home church in Malden, Missouri. Which, and I, I left Malden when I was 14 and moved to Columbia. But the preacher didn't know that I had gone to that church at all. He had just heard Singing As We Rise on the Gibson Brothers album, and he tracked me down. So I, you know, you know, I opened up my Gmail, and it's like, Dear Mr. Newberry, I'm the preacher in a little town in Missouri that you've never heard of. <laughs> in a little church you've never heard of, Malden First Presbyterian, and I want to do your song, Singing As We Rise, in my church. And I said, my God. I sent him back a, I sent him back a reply and said, Preacher, if you uh, look in that third pew on the left, that's where everybody in this song sat. And he sent me back a one-word reply, which was, Amen. So I will do, uh, I will do this for you. Up on the mountain, Mother is singing, laughing and shouting, her sweet voice is ringing. Pay no mind to dark and stormy skies, Mother is singing, singing as we rise. Sing.
I'll do one more that uh, about, it's not about my mother, but it's something that, that she would have loved. Um, there are a couple of people in this room who actually knew my mother, Virginia Dare Hart Newberry. And um, my family was a singing family from the Ozarks, but when mom and dad got married, I mean, they loved all sorts of music. They loved everything from Grand Opera to the Grand Ole Opry. And my mother was crazy for big band music. Her favorite singing group was uh, the Mills Brothers, and that's where I set this song when I wrote it. It's sort of that, that sort of jazzy, 1940s, beautiful round tone singing. But mother's favorite performer was not the Mills Brothers. It was Lawrence Awelk. Oh, yeah. And she even had her own nickname for him. She called him Lawrencey, and I would be sitting there in my room on, on Saturday, and I would hear, Joe, get in here. Lawrencey's on. And I'd, you know, sullen teenager, I'd walk in and I'd sit down. And, oh, I, what I wouldn't give to hear that one more time. And so, uh, <laughs> mother was a semi-invalid. She was ill for a long time, in about the last 10 years of her life. But, you know, she had some hard days, but she had good days and lots of them. And a really good day was the day that my dad brought home two tickets to the Shrine Auditorium in Springfield, Missouri to see Lawrence Welk and his big band. Oh, you've never seen the gussying that went on. New dress, the reddest lipstick she could find, that last little <laughs> spritz of Estee Lauder smells so sweet. And they go to the show, about halfway through, Lawrence comes up to a microphone much like this and he says, I wonder if there are any ladies in the audience who would like to dance. And my frail, sick little mother ran up the center aisle, <laughs> beat out every woman in the joint, danced first with Lawrence Welk, and got her picture the next morning above the fold in the Springfield News and Leader. It was a good night for Virginia Newberry. And I can't, I can't think of, uh, I can't sing this song without thinking about the fact that she would have really liked this song. And she loved all sorts of music, even that. <laughs> and I think about what a good mom she was. And so I'll, I'll send Baby I'm Blue up to, uh, up to Virginia Dare Hard Newberry there in heaven. a color so splendid I slept the night through blue was just something the wind did I lost you that's something I never intended intended Baby, I'm blue Before you Blew through my life like a trade wind Blue Blue was the mark of a true friend When I lost you I learned how much I did Depended on you, baby, I'm blue. For you blew out a spark that was kindred 
Who knew that kind of love could have ended? My heart has a tear that will never be mended, at least not by you. a color so splendid I slept the night through blue was just something the wind did I lost you that's something I never intended for I depended on Baby, I'm blue. Sad, but it's true. I'm lost without you. Baby, I'm blue. Thank you very much. Well, my time is drawing a little a little short. Any any other requests before I go on to my last couple? John. Yes. Are you still singing Deep Funk Heart? Oh my gosh. Um, a deep false heart. Now we must part. May the joys of the world go with you. I loved you once with a faithful heart, but never anymore can I believe you. I'd seen the time I'd have married you. And been your constant lover But now I'd gladly give you up To one whose heart's more true My heart is like the constant sun from the east to the west, it ranges, but yours is like unto the moon. It's every month that changes when I lay down to take my rest. There'll be no one. Wake me, I'll go straight away unto my grave, just as fast as time will take me. Adieu, you false heart, now we must part. May the joys of the world go with you. I loved you once with a faithful heart, but never anymore can I believe you. I guess that one's in my old lizard brain. I haven't thought of that in a long time. Anybody else have something from my childhood? <laughs> I haven't thought of this in a long time. Will you indulge me in my folk music?
from the coffee house days. I, um, I lived at the Shea Coffee House. Now, I know a lot of people will say, oh, I love that coffee house. I just lived at that coffee house. I lived at a coffee house. In the basement of the, of the Presbyterian Church, uh, there were seven of us, and we ran different programs every night. My, uh, my night was Wednesday night, which was um, open mic night. And uh, I, we'd get great musicians. We'd get musicians who were having a great time. So, um, I, uh, I, there was one fella, time has erased his, uh, his name to me, but he would come down every Wednesday night and he would do two numbers. He would do a, a number called Thorny as a Rose, that was his own number, which was like, Thorny as a Rose, nee -nee 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 -nee. wild as a flower, nee -nee 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 -nee. my love for you grows. More and more chower. There was that, and he did Route 66. So I, it took me a long time to get back to Route 66. But I, I don't know why. Maybe it's because Candy's here. But I, th I thought about this. It's called Home Deary Home. And um, I, I would do Prairie Home Companion Cruises. And a guy kept coming to all of my shows on the ship. And... I finally went up and I said, you look really familiar and I don't know where I've met you. And he said, oh, my name's Ed Trickett. I said, um, yeah, I've got all your albums, yes. <laughs> He's a wonderful uh, singer on the Folk Legacy record. Anyway, I learned this from Ed and so it's called Home Deary Home. Hamble is a fine town with ships about the bay. Fain, very fain to be there myself today. I'm wishing in my heart I was far away from here. Sitting in my parlor and talking with my dear. It's home, dearie home. It's home I want to be. My top sails are hoisted. I'm out to sea. The oak and the ash and the bonny birch and tree are all growing green in the north country. It's home, dearie home. A letter came today, but somehow I cannot speak. Proud and happy tears are rolling down my cheek. There's someone here, she says, you've been waiting for to see With your merry hazel eyes looking up from off my knee It's home, dearie home But the letter never said if it was a boy or girl Got me so confused that my heart is all a whirl I'm going back to port where I'll quickly turn around and take the fastest ship which to Amble Town is bound. It's home, dearie home. It's home I want to be. My top sails are hoisted. I am out to sea. The oak and the If it be a boy, he'll live to serve the king with his buckles and his boots and his little jacket blue. He'll walk the quarter deck like his daddy used to do. It's home, dearie home. It's home I want to be. My top sails are hoisted. I am out to sea. The oak and the ash and the bonny birch and tree are all growing green in the north country. It's home, dearie home. Yeah. 
Thank you. Well, that, that uh, walk down memory lane was sponsored by Big River Media Group, founders of our feast. So um, I think I'll do I think I'll do one more, and then um, I'll go on to the next place. And you'll come back here and support the uh, focal point as much as you can. What a jewel this place is! What a jewel it is! And please give generously at the at on uh, May fourth. For the uh, for the benefit. Here's another fun another fun uh, my attempt at a fun song. The uh, the Gibson brothers recorded this and they did a great job. But but Lee sings it a little smoother than than I wrote it. And so I decided when I would go out and do stuff with Mr. Compton or with uh, with uh, John solo runs that I do it a little bit more honky tonk um, the honky tonk uh, thing that I wrote it like. Um, it's uh, it started life as a fiddle tune title from Western North Carolina called The Darker the Night, the Better I See. And if that's not a honky-tonk song already, I don't know what it is. I've honky-tonked most all of my life. My day begins at the edge of the night. I stay up late It don't bother me Because the darker the night The darker the night The better I see You know the lights I love Are the lights of town I thank the Lord above When the sun goes down Find a shady spot It's where I'll be Because the darker the night The darker the night The better I see Now my hit parade Has about three chords But I'll guarantee That you won't be bored it starts getting good Round quarter to three Oh, the darker the night The darker the night The better I see You know the lights I love Are the lights of town I thank the Lord above When the sun goes down Find a shady spot And that's where I'll be The darker the night The darker the night The better I see now Down there in the boot hill My dad was an attorney And you know attorneys will At five o'clock strike a blow for liberty Solve the problems of the world and they also like to bust each other's chops, lawyers do. So his colleagues would say, Judge, you, you know, you better watch yourself. You might end up, you know, down there. He'd just grin. He'd say, that may be true. You may be right. You go first and save me a shady spot. So I got to put that in this song. I rest my case. At the break of the day What some call work I call play I once was blind But now I'm free The darker the night The darker the night The better I see Where I be darker the night, the darker the night, the better I see. You heard me right, the darker the night, the 
better I see You want it slow? Do you want it fast? Do you want it half fast? What do you want? Do you want banjo? Do you want guitar? Banjo. Please. <laughs> I had to go there. <laughs> mm. Do one from Gaither Carlton. If you don't know Gaither, you know his son-in-law. He was Doc Watson's father-in-law. Just a little uh, free-floating verse song, not rocket surgery. It's just sweet. Down the road, 